and the engine itself spent a whole year underground, though ultimately after unearthing it we were still able to start it. This here is a Toyota 2C T, namely to convert a diesel engine to run on gasoline. In the previous episode, we are going to be using the fuel injector holes to mount the spark plugs. Oh, for real? Hey guys, in this episode we'll be featuring the diesel motor that we've converted to run on gasoline. We've been getting a bunch of questions as to how it's going to run, how it's going to pull. Of course, I highly doubt that it's going to have the low-end torque of a diesel, which makes perfect sense. On the other hand, it should come alive up top, right? Assuming the head, cam and valve train allow the engine to make good power. Our goal now would be to find the parts necessary to put together a working engine transmission combo that would allow us to do some driving. And then it's a matter of implanting it into a lot of Fellas, I'd just like to say thank you for your support and for your kind words. I'm well now and everything's good. Now you yourselves take care. And make sure to take all of the necessary precautions given the situation we're in. Now the latest addition to our online shop are these lovely face masks that'll help keep you safe from all sorts of nasty infections. Now at the moment it's August and the rainy autumn season is right around the corner, meaning it's time to buy some warm clothing. We're offering you guys these fantastic hoodies from our shop. And as of recent we've also got these awesome vests for sale. On top of that we've got a bunch of other stuff, and we're always adding something new to the product line. For example, not too long ago we began to offer these nifty lighters and air fresheners. So go ahead and give our online shop a visit. Get yourself some G54 merch. And when using the code from the video description, you can buy some stuff at a good discount. In the meantime, we've put together a complete swap kit, like all the ingredients. Okay, let's take this from the top then. We've already installed a gigantic flywheel, the stock one that came with the 2C engine. It was inexpensive and it obviously was a perfect fit. Though the factory bolts are not ideal with how thick it is. Then we have a clutch pressure plate for this specific flywheel, the one you'd find on this particular diesel. The clutch disc is from a Volga. Why so? Well, that's because we are going to be using a Volga gearbox. Here we've got the Volga bell housing. The prop shaft is from a Volga, as is pretty much the entire swap kit. We can definitely make good use of this new clutch fork. This is a new throwout bearing. It's in excellent shape. Okay, so the flywheel is in place. The clutch disc is just the right size. A perfect match for the OEM part. The splines fit a Volga, so we've got that aspect covered. The gearbox is a 4-speed Volga unit. The bell housing is for that gearbox. The part you bolt to the engine we're going to be cutting off, replacing it with a piece from the automatic transmission for the 2C diesel motor. Now it's a matter of doing some cutting and welding, assembling the entire lot, and installing it into a car the whole powertrain. We also have yet to sort the exhaust manifold, because the old one was a turbo manifold. And most likely we are not going to be running the turbo on this engine. The idea is to conduct initial testing with a carburetor. Anyway, for now the main priority is the engine conversion.
Okay, we are ready to fit the engine to this lovely Lada 6 series. Now the entire team, including the camera guy, contributed to welding together this bell housing. As for why we put it together piece by piece using bits from the 2C gearbox and a Volga, well that's because it's a tried and tested solution that we've been running in another car of ours for a while with no issues. We've got the clutch mounted in the same exact spot it'd be in a Volga. We've checked to make sure the clutch works, so everything is good. The boys have replaced the carburetor jets, they've actually upgraded the stock ones. So now the engine runs great at idle, well and generally all through the rev range. It really gives you a feeling as if it's foreign made, which it is. Okay, let's go ahead and slap it on then. We will have to hack the firewall, relocate the gas pedal and such, but otherwise we are pretty close to getting this thing to drive. The motor is in and it fits quite nicely, though we did have to cut out some metal next to the gas pedal, otherwise we wouldn't have been able to fit the engine. The guys are pouring in some oil from up top through the gear shift mechanism. I'd like to point out that the prop shaft is half Volga and half Lada. It's all working out pretty well, though we have run into a typical Lada headache in that you can't just shoehorn any sort of engine into these cars. Anybody who's ever tried doing an engine swap on these things has always had to deal with this gigantic steering mechanism getting in the way. So as a result, no engine aside from factory stock or maybe some really tiny one fits in this engine bay. There's always some interference with the oil pan. Now to solve the problem, we've bought this rack which is meant to have power steering, but we've removed all of the high pressure lines. It's not ideal, but there aren't that many options. This rack is meant to be placed up front, but we're placing it towards the back, which will provide proper steering action. Then there's this reduction box, which we need to use given that the angles are way off. So the steering rack will be a separate thing, and then we'll have this box, which is gonna act as a sort of adapter. First off, to ensure that everything rotates in the right direction, and second, so that the joiners aren't placed at extreme angles. Otherwise, you wouldn't even be able to turn the wheel. Or even worse, it'll get stuck while the car is moving. So all of this is setting us back another half a day, but no worries. We are very close to sorting everything and heading out for some testing. We've completed the build. Now we did rework the entire suspension, but we were in a bit of a rush given that we don't know if the engine will even work. I mean, it might break after running for just a minute. And I've got some great news for you. Which is that... Some really good news. Hello, my car mechanic friends. Vlad is finally with us again. Hey man. Yeah, I have been released. What's up? What's interesting is that... Hello. You got sick right when we were in the middle of filming the first episode, just when we were beginning to assemble the engine. And now the car's ready, check it out. Yeah, I came right on time. To miss the whole thing. I guess I'll have to watch this entire episode once it comes out. No, I'll happily watch it. I think we should go for a ride and let you share your impressions on how the whole thing works. Wow, even the color matches. I saw how you guys were firing it up. That's when I was at peak feeling like shit. Still though, I did have the capacity to watch that video. And honestly, I was pretty amazed. To see you guys make it work so well right off the bat. But now I want to see how it runs in real life. Well, let's go for a ride then. Now we all have a pretty good idea on how a stock lot of drives, I mean... We've all driven them and we've gone through a bunch of them. Good times. Okay, let's do this already. Oh, really? We're gonna be eyeballing the fuel level. If something goes wrong, we'll head right on back. We didn't have enough time to do the fuel system. We'll attend to that a bit later. Oh, wow, that is terrifying. 
It does start like a diesel. It even sounds a bit like a diesel when running. The gearbox is so much more pleasant to use. Yeah, true. Oh, wow, is it touchy. Let's do this. So the stock diesel made 71 horsepower, I think it was. Yeah, not a lot. Very little, I'd say. You don't hear that typical rattling noise. No, it's there, man. No, those are the internal components, I don't know, or maybe it's the firing order. I think... That typical diesel -y sound is very much there. It has to be down to how the fuel combusts. It's as if it's burning from being compressed. Agreed. A lot of people would say it's the high-pressure fuel pump. In our case, it can only be the distributor. Well, it can't be the high-pressure pump. Can it set off in second? Easily. Indeed. Isn't that something? We need to... The acceleration isn't that great, though. Yeah, it dies off early. There's plenty of torque, but, like, no power. Well, I'd say we have torque and horsepower. It's just that it doesn't rev like a gasoline motor. Now, I take it the tack is hooked up to the distributor like it should be. Yeah, the reading is correct. It's connected like it would be from the factory. Once it gets up to about four grand, I'd say, it starts to roar like a diesel engine would when you're over-revving it. Or like an EVE engine that instead of pulling, it just sort of moans. Yeah, I know exactly what you mean. On the other hand, the carby tuning might be off. We just stuck on some Neva jets and didn't do anything else. Why didn't you go with an UAS carburetor? Well, we found this one, it was in good working condition. I get it. Well, guys, the car does drive. And it feels really good. You hear how it's running now that the engine is warmed up? The revs have dropped somewhat. It really does sound like a diesel. This is hilarious. Whoa, what's that noise? Careful with your steering input. What? Is that fourth? Can you feel how it's pulling uphill? Okay, what just happened? The prop shaft might be hitting something. Oh, so that's it. Nothing to worry about then. Oh, this thing actually goes. Especially at lower revs. Oh yeah, it pulls hard down low. Up until about three grand. It was hauling up that hill. In a normal lot, you'd have to use third gear and it'd barely even be accelerating. But here you smash it into fourth, wide open throttle, and it doesn't struggle in the least. It just goes. That's just a bit of blow-by. It isn't too hot, is it? Well, it is warm and the fans are on. You want to keep going? Yeah, let's do it. This drives very well. Indeed. Like an actual freaking diesel. Cyril! Where'd all the gas go? Oh my god, is it thirsty. That was a very short distance we drove. It goes through a lot of gas, doesn't it? Holy cow. It pulls well, though. I know it does, but it doesn't rev. I gotta say, this has much more torque than a standard Lada. It's a way more pleasant experience. Of course. Which makes sense, given it's got more displacement. I mean, what do you even expect from a 1.5? Or in best case scenario, a 1.6? Wait a second, bro, they did make a 1.7. Okay, sure, even a 1.8. So you have those options, but they don't feel nearly as good. And that sound. Hopefully you guys can hear it too. It really does sound like a diesel. Even though it does run on gasoline, when you're driving around in this thing, you still get the feeling that you're driving a car with a diesel engine. That is hilarious. Ooh. 
All right. That was really... That was very good. You know, it doesn't even feel like it was converted. We came out of that turn. Second, third, fourth uphill. Oh yeah, it doesn't even care. But there seems to be some knocking that shouldn't be there. I take it that's detonation? It is detonation, we need to adjust the ignition timing. And fill the thing with like 287 octane gas. The diesel valves... I mean the diesel pistons will never melt ever. Most likely, though we can't be sure. If I may contribute... For me... Now the car works beautifully, but in the back of my mind I was expecting a miracle to happen for the car to be a real beast. It was just a hope I had. We do have plenty of torque in the lower half of the rev band though. At low revs this engine is a monster, but it's all below 3 grand. Any higher and the torque starts to die off considerably. You don't have a lot of power up top. You know, I don't see the point in trying to fool anybody here. The reality of the situation is that the power doesn't seem to have increased at all compared to the base diesel. That said, bear in mind that we're not running the turbo. For now we aren't. Yes. The cam profile might not be ideal. We might have to look into valve overlap and all of that stuff. Yeah, there is quite a lot to consider. We don't know why it isn't pulling up top. So we need to narrow things down and determine whether it's the carburetor or something else. The thing is that if we install a turbo, well, it's gonna be quite a difficult process. You know, the carburetor is gonna have to go. It's all an unknown. Maybe we should just wait for the comments. I really enjoyed reading through the comments underneath the last video. There was a big discussion happening. Lots of feedback. I'm actually really glad you guys share your thoughts. And I'm looking forward to your ideas this time. What do you guys think would be the simplest way to set up a turbo system? Is it even worth the effort? Fitting a turbo to this engine... I mean, we can combine a turbo with a carburetor, like we've already done in the past. But ideally, you need to convert the engine to fuel injection. What I can tell you is that we'll definitely be hitting the dyno, after we do a few tweaks here and there. After all, we did hear a bit of knocking when we were out driving. It's nothing serious, of course. It's the sort of thing that usually happens when you do an engine conversion. It's never just a matter of stuffing a motor in. No way, that is not how it works. Anyways, so we're gonna be hitting the dyno, and who knows, we might even do a bit of racing along the way. All of that's gonna happen a bit later. In the meantime, we're looking at a 107% success rate. It works, and it is great. And that's all we got for you. Watch us, subscribe. Don't forget to leave some comments. Yeah, please do. Suggestions? Give us a big thumbs up. And don't forget that we got merch. Given that I have to shield myself from the wind, this hoodie is very useful, as it provides excellent protection for my lungs. Okay, subscribe, write some comments. Big thumbs up. Catch you later. Bye-bye.